Uh, I would like to talk as a more practitioner, uh, not the theoretician of education. I'm economist and there are many jokes about economists uh, these days, but I spent uh, 53 years in academia, over 30 years at American uh, top universities, um, the first 30 of the worldwide ranking. And so I would like to look from this uh, point of, of view, uh, how we can uh, meet the needs of global education. I am happy that uh, we raise the issue of uh, global education because we, we see now what is going on in the world, you know, how to get uh, tools, knowledge and skills and attitudes to the people affected by climate change, uh, biodiversity degradation and so on in the, to, to stop the, the unnecessary immigration and to stop these catastrophic events. Anyway, I like the paper. I think that, that there is a great uh, achievement to summarize and then uh, I support all major uh, uh, finding uh, in terms of past and uh, identification new challenges and uh, solution. But I would like to uh, focus on a few uh, issues which uh, should be further expanded. And uh, thanks God, uh, some of my colleagues already raised this issue, but uh, so I would like to avoid repetition and then uh, uh, just focus on uh, some additional uh, elements. So in terms of online uh, education yeah i'm um, in favor for the hybrid taking uh, uh, education and this is something what uh, i remember was strongly emphasized during the first session uh education uh, should meet uh, local needs but with the global focus so uh, somehow we should take advantage of technology progress and use all available uh, resources, um, MOC, uh, technical education, whatever, all these online courses, and uh, find the hub, as Pavel mentioned, and he is completely right, and uh, somebody else also, to adapt and to uh, design the program uh, to respond to local needs. This is the way we can save time of faculty, uh, changing their roles uh, to serve as facilitator and mentors and designer of uh, certified or un uncertified professional programs using the resources of the best uh, uh, worldwide universities. I am experiencing uh, to some extent that type of experience working from 2005 with uh, Harvard Business School with uh, Professor Porter. In fact, you know, from two o'clock, I attended both our events from 2.30 and Harvard, watching the annual workshop. And what is important to apply the knowledge produced by the best universities and pedagogy to the local needs. We have over 130 or uh, universities worldwide uh, in the network. We created a network. This program will have 20 years already. And most of them, about 70%, are the universities from developing countries, Latin America, Asia, then Europe, not many American universities. What they are doing, they are using the, the streamlined uh, lectures, cases, methods, you know, to the local needs, period. There is not a big uh, annual fee to, to join this, but we have access to all these cases nonstop, and we can uh, really apply the best uh, research. What happened uh, during this, I am 17 years with this system. Besides education, we developed joint research addressing the major 
problems. We are moving out of microeconomics of competitiveness to sustainability, to building shared values. This is an evolution. We uh, somehow feedback, this is not one way stream. You might think that if we use uh, MOOC, this is just one way stream. But anyway, so this is something what uh, uh, is working and uh, that type of uh, support the, the idea of micro credentials and uh, uh, CBA education competency, but we need to keep in mind one thing competency build education uh, practiced by American universities is good to recognize the experience and professional knowledge of adults who didn't have opportunity to, to get degrees. But what about the, the, the future generation? This is what, uh, you know, 100 million, 200 million. So, I mean, there are big needs. If we want to resolve global problems, we should think about numbers. So from that point of view, local universities are necessary to adapt and design these programs Either, as, as uh, Remus reminded us, uh, education is not about knowledge. And I think that so far, you know, in this document, we focus uh, a lot about knowledge, but not about how to uh, shape practical needs and how to shape the values. As he mentioned uh, rightly, we need to not only provide knowledge for personal development, skills to be competitive, attractive on the labor market, but we need to shape good citizens. We need to, as Professor uh, Emil uh, Konstantinescu said, value, and this is the attitudes building. So we need to have face-to-face. -face. It's almost impossible to build attitudes online. Some students are turning off the, the video. You don't see them. You don't see reactions. You know, I was teaching uh, uh, since uh, March uh, last year online, and, and this is this is the problem. So the uh, the local universities, uh, uh, regional universities, should be combined with the top universities, which are providing the uh, top uh, um, the, the highest class uh, knowledge. What else? Uh, and then we need to give them opportunity to shape this by themselves. I think that I, I was doing this uh, for many years, but uh, uh, enthusiasm of my friend Alberto Zucconi to move further to community learning uh, arrangement really push me harder. I, I, I think there is a great concept. And so how we are doing, not just in the class, but you know, half of my classes are graded by the team research project. And there are identifying uh, local problems or company problems uh, or uh, social problems and applying the tools we are giving them in the class. So I was surprised when I came to the state that we have home take exams. Kaha uh, raised the issue of cheating. There is no problem of cheating if you give them original problem to resolve, which never uh, was taken by anybody. You will see how they apply the, the methodology. And the same with this. So we, we can see how the knowledge from the top universities is applied to, to my village, you know, to my city, and so on. This is the verification. What are was right, you know, the issue is uh, uh, of verification of securance of, uh, of uh, quality. But if you see that the small team, three to five persons uh, resolving, I mean, successfully the uh, concrete problems, hey, this is the best verification of their knowledge because it's supply knowledge. The knowledge which you have for yourself is not that uh, value. Okay, so anyway, so we need to design the pedagogy this way that we will be shaping uh, the, uh, the, the skills and attitudes. So uh, then from that point of view, 
we need to make distinction between uh, undergrad uh, education. It should be more discipline oriented to give them just the basic knowledge. And then at the end, you know, I mean, need to move to integrate them through some interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary uh, work. And the graduate, you know, uh, education should be well balanced between disciplinary and transdisciplinary teaching with, uh, with the joint project, teaching project, instead of thesis, which as useless, just get them involved in real life problems and help them to develop. We didn't talk uh, about uh, social capital, relations, with local government, with local companies, what uh, Mariana was talking, it's very important, get companies involved in education. And then sometimes we don't need to certify such programs which uh, are needed only for companies, help them to get access and uh, check that. And the final uh, stuff, uh, uh, I think that uh, with the pandemic crisis, uh, we learned one uh, thing, one very important thing. Sustainability means converting crisis into opportunities. I think the global uh, community pulled, uh, put together resources, five vaccinations, so we are working, maybe for sure not enough, but we are moving in this direction. I hope that uh, this uh, pandemic will be also a turning point for a global education, which I am happy to, to see it's happening step by step. Thank you very much.